In this tutorial, we will go over how to play the role of a sniper. Let's start with some theory about the playstyle, how to choose a mech, build it in the mech lab, and end off with some example gameplay. The sniper is a long range specialist that uses powerful weapons to blow holes through enemy battle mechs from the safety of solid cover, 500 or more meters away. They use long range direct fire weapons such as the Gauss rifle, PPC, ER large laser, or some combination of the three. While you can do this playstyle on all sizes of mechs, the more powerful snipers are typically heavies or assaults that can carry at least a dual gauss or equivalent size loadout. Lighter mechs won't have the weight for these larger weapons and will need to rely on some quantity of ER large lasers and tend towards more of a harassment playstyle, such as with the champion Raven 3L. Mobility is not as an important factor for snipers as it is for other supporting fire roles like the LRM carrier. However, this does not mean that the sniper is a passive role where you are picking out a spot and camping there until the end of the match. It is very important to constantly adjust to maintain good firing lanes on the enemy position without being left behind by your team. This will take some spatial awareness and predictive ability in order to know where you want to move next, how to get there, and when to move based on the state of the battlefield. If you are skilled in this, you can make a sniper with a max speed of 65 km per hour work. However, if you are just getting started, a higher max speed and or jump jets are recommended to give yourself an edge in mobility in case you find yourself out of position. The main weakness of snipers is their short range combat ability. Fast enemy lights and mediums can easily flank and swarm an unsuspecting sniper. It is crucial that you are constantly checking your flanks in order to catch the enemy before they close on you. Also, if you are playing in a group, having a dedicated rear guard, a mech designed to intercept enemy harassers, can let the snipers focus on the front lines while leaving the flanks to their ally. Another important feature to look for in a sniper mech is high mounted weapon hardpoints. This is when a weapon is physically mounted high up on a mech's body, such as above the torso or shoulders. They allow you to fire on the enemy while only revealing a small portion of your mech from cover, limiting the ability for the enemy to return fire. Some examples of this are the Jager mech's arms, Timberwolf A variant left torso, and Helmringer A variant head. When you are using lasers as your sniping weapon, you can just hold the crosshairs on the enemy and shoot. There is no travel time. However, if you are using projectile weapons such as Gauss or PPC at these ranges, you need to compensate for enemy movement in order to hit your target. There are three different techniques you can use. The maintained lead, swing through, and ambush. All are compensating for the travel time of the projectile in different ways. Maintained lead is where you are constantly adjusting your aim ahead of your target's movement. You are holding the crosshairs on the point in front of the target that will allow your projectiles to hit if you were to shoot at any time. This is the more common style and is better for pilots with a steady hand that can maintain their aim. Swing through is where you follow an imaginary smoke trail that is left behind by the enemy battle mech. You draw your crosshairs along this trail, through the target, and release the shot as you pass through the point when you achieve enough lead. This is best used for snap shots where you don't have time to settle in and try to maintain a consistent lead. Ambush is where you predict where the enemy will move and place your crosshairs to intercept their movement. Then, firing at the right time, you are in essence causing the enemy to walk into your shot. I would say that this is the hardest of the three as it requires good predictive skill, accurate timing, and longer exposure time. However, if you master it, you can pull off seemingly impossible shots, such as hitting mechs as they pass between buildings by predicting movement and firing before they are even visible. The best quirks to look for on sniping mechs are projectile velocity and range increases. Having a faster projectile will lower the amount of required lead, making the entire sniping experience easier, and range increases will help increase your damage when firing your weapons beyond the base optimal range. For this video, I will be using the Jager mech chassis as an example build. Here I am using the Hero variant, but if you are interested in trying this out on the Jager mech, the A variant actually has better quirks for this build. With your mech from the store, strip its components and balance out the armor, focusing it towards the front. Select your upgrades, endo steel for an increase of available tonnage, and double heat sinks for additional cooling. Note that if you are using the dual gauss build, you actually don't need double heat sinks, as the build is so cold. You can save the money of upgrading double heat sinks. Next is your engine. At minimum I recommend around 65 km per hour. Because I have this mech mastered, an XL250 that I have on hand gives me 67 km per hour after speed tweak. 
If you would like a little more speed, a rating of around 265 will give you a 71 km per hour after tweak. Next is your weapons, in this case two Gauss rifles, one in each arm. You want to make sure that the weapons occupy the highest available hardpoint. Sometimes, when there are multiple hardpoints within a section, you need to use another small weapon to bump your sniping weapon into the right spot. You can do this by adding weapons to the section in a specific order, such as in this example where I add the small laser before the ERPPCs. Next is ammo quantity. For Gauss rifles, I take around 2.5 to 3 tons per rifle. This should give enough ammunition for you to last the whole match if you take careful aimed shots. If you are running an energy-based sniping build, take enough heat sinks to maintain your heat efficiency at 1.2 or higher. For mech modules, I recommend advanced zoom for greater magnification at long ranges and seismic sensor to warn you if you're about to be flanked by an enemy. For weapon modules, I would go with cooldown and range on your main sniping weapon. If you are combining Gauss and something else, take the modules for Gauss, as it has a shorter range and longer cooldown than ERPPC or ER Large Laser. And for consumables, a strike will increase your damage, and if you are using energy-based weapons, a cool shot can help in emergency situations. Your sniper is now ready for battle. Let's take a look at some example gameplay using this build. Dropping into a skirmish match on Caustic Valley, I immediately move to regroup with my team, checking to the left for any enemies that may come from that flank. Since I am long range, I will be staying back from the front lines, moving off to the right of my team and trying to find an elevated position to fire from. I notice the enemy UAV, and I stop to take it down with a single shot. Continuing around and up the hill, I slowly peek over the top to fire on the enemy. Noticing the incoming missiles, I back down to break line of sight and move 90 degrees to their direction of movement in order to dodge them. And again, creeping up and firing on the enemy just as my weapons clear the hill. Spotting a new enemy, I pull back until I am in cover from the enemies on the right and focus on the Ebon Jaguar, putting in a good shot. Since the enemy has now made my position and is expecting me to pop up there again, I move to the right, getting caught with a little bit of rear torso damage as I move away. Checking the sight lines, I am unable to get a good shot on the Stormcrow or Ebon Jaguar. Trying a shot here, but the screen shake of enemy fire caused me to miss. Landing a shot on the enemy Ebon Jaguar, I decide that this corner is not working out, so I move slightly back and to my left and watch the left passage. Attempting a shot on the Cicada, but I overcompensated and missed, however I do land the shot on the Marauder. I back down the hill while taking fire to break line of sight, and then creep back up to continue firing on the enemy. Unfortunately, putting my shot through the armpit of the Timberwolf. Ignoring the commando as he runs by, too fast and small for me to reliably hit. However, I take a shot at the larger cicada but after he moves past, I ignore him and continue watching the pass. 
Seeing the enemy down several mechs, I push forward to help finish the match. You may not have as high a damage number as you do with other playstyles, but if you are accurate, you can know that all that damage went to directly killing your target, instead of being spread across the enemy. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Good hunting.